Item number, SCP-515. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-515 is to be kept entirely monocled to his sleeping quarters, to the point of near total immobility. If SCP-515's enclosure is seen to be empty, top priority must be placed on immediate recapture. Locomotion or simple twitch response behavior exhibited by SCP-515 is to be noted and reported to research and emergency staff. If SCP-515's legs or arms are in working order, they must be broken immediately to minimize his sleepwalking speed in the event of escape. See Addendum 515-1. The neck, however, cannot be broken due to the risk of death. See Addendum 515-2. Instead, it must be held immobile by a brace covering up to the chin and down to the shoulders. Amputation and severing the motor nerves of the limbs are also not recommended, due to similar risks, and all muscle relaxants tested thus far have resulted in convulsive reactions, and as such, should not be administered. Restraints are not to be unfastened at any time for any reason, and the room is not to be opened for anything but standard research purposes unless emergency conditions require it. Maintenance crews and D-Class are also to be kept away from the enclosure, unless otherwise noted. Description: SCP-515 is presently a Caucasian male of the approximate age of 14. No applicable birth certificate has yet been found, so all relevant personal information is the product of hypotheses and the subject of guesswork. His basal metabolic rate is comparable to that of a blue whale or a mammal of greater size, but mass is slightly below average for humans of similar ages. Despite ignorance of all other bodily needs, and despite attempted interference on the part of researchers, SCP-515 has yet to be observed in a state of consciousness, apart from stage N3 dreamless sleep. For the entire duration of containment, SCP-515 has ingested no food or water, and has passed no waste. What has kept him alive for so long is still under study. Even asleep, SCP-515 has been known to speak on rare occasions. Little of what is said is intelligible, and that which can be heard is typically incoherent, similar to the speech of a person in the grip of delirium. Portions have been recorded for future research. No noticeable difference in the movement of SCP-515-1 has been noted during these periods. Records of SCP-515 in Somniloquy The vessel cannot view the incomprehensible. It simply moves in time with the sea. 26th of December, 19... There are more. There are always more. Repeated for several minutes. 13th of April, 2000... Data expunged. Can you see where I am? Can you breathe? Can you move? 6th of August, 2000. Whenever SCP-515 moves in any capacity, one or more of a number of celestial objects, mostly asteroids, move as well. The estimated 19 objects, heretofore collectively named SCP-515-1, vary in diameter from 1.5 kilometers to 33.6 kilometers. The largest of these is roughly 133% the size of the object that caused the Vredefort impact crater in Free State, South Africa. Regardless of the direction of SCP-515's motion, SCP-515-1 only ever moves toward Earth. A twitch of a finger or toe typically corresponds to a movement of about 140 kilometers. Comparable movement of a limb indicates motion of SCP-515-1 on the scale of 460 kilometers or more. Sustained motion, such as sleepwalking, has been demonstrated to correlate with the objects traveling toward Earth at velocities reaching 280,000 kilometers per hour. The rise and fall of SCP-515's chest, unfortunately, must not be stopped, and, according to Foundation satellites, corresponds with a movement in the celestial objects to the degree of 10 kilometers per respiratory cycle. If SCP-515 is killed, it is presumable that someone with a similar anomaly will appear someplace else on the planet. See Addendum 515-2.
Due to the difficulty and danger of having to find such an individual with no initial leads, it is stressed that killing SCP-515 is never an acceptable course of action. Addendum 515-1 On a number of occasions, SCP-515 has been freed from his restraints by unknown means. No physical presence has been seen to cause this, and the restraints themselves have only ever looked as though they remained untouched during these occurrences. Because of this, it is yet uncertain whether it is his own doing that he escapes, or that an outside force is interfering without being noticed. If this occurs, all available resources at site must be directed toward SCP-515's location, recovery, and placement into enclosure. Addendum 515-2 The designation of SCP-515 was formerly given to a middle-aged woman from Guatemala with a condition identical to that of the current designee. She too was found with no personal history and with no connection to any people in the surrounding area, despite having lived in a small and closely knit community. After the realization of her connection with SCP-515-1 and her coming into care of the Foundation, both a tight-fitting full-body cast and the routine breaking of the legs, arms, and neck were used to prevent the subject from moving. Both she and the present SCP-515 have been known to escape confinement, including such a cast, so keeping major bones broken was used as a method of keeping movement slow when such events transpired. However, on complications from a pair of shattered vertebrae proved fatal. SCP-515-1 was noted to have stopped moving after this occurrence, and after several months without any change, the Foundation presumed the matter closed. On motion of SCP-515-1 restarted. A thorough search returned the result of the current designee after 22 days. He was taken into custody immediately, and subjected to revised containment policies that prevented the breaking of the neck. SCP-515-1 had moved a total distance of kilometers from the start of the search to its finish, and has moved an estimated kilometers during his stay at the Foundation. Due to the motion caused by SCP-515's respiration, the Foundation continues to allocate resources toward finding an efficient manner of neutralizing the threat presented by the potential impact of SCP-515-1. Lesson Complete if you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-514, A Flock of Doves, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.